Hi and welcome, I'm Nadine Piet from Healthy You, Healthy Love and I'm a coach for smart, savvy women looking for sexy, united love. And in today's video, I'm gonna be talking about long distance relationships and how to make a long distance relationship work. Now what you may not know is that long distance relationships can thrive even more so than a relationship that's not long distance. Why? Because when people don't live together, they've got to emotionally connect on a deeper level. They're forced to, their circumstances have, you know, led them to communicate more so than perhaps people who live in the same city live together. And so this is why being in a long distance relationship can be one of the most beautiful foundations for a relationship. I also know of people who started their relationship in a long distance, they met at a work event or they met on a holiday and they initially couldn't live together and because of this their relationship was largely built on friendship and emotion and really understanding each other's deeper needs and wants and desires so please know that being in a long distance relationship does not mean that you're doomed you can thrive in this relationship that all said, you're watching this video for a reason because chances are there is something that you're struggling with with your long distance relationship or you're even wondering should you engage in one. Maybe you've just met someone and you're trying to work out what to do. So let's get into how to make a long distance relationship work. Number one is are you committed to the relationship? This point applies to any relationship. Just because you're dating or spending time together or committed to each other doesn't mean that you're fully committed. For couples who live in the same city or live together, just because you share the same postcode doesn't mean that you are wholeheartedly committed to the relationship. So the same goes for long distance relationships. If you're not 100% committed to being in this together, if you're not pretty much equally balanced in the amount of effort you're both willing to put into the relationship, to work, then I wouldn't even bother. There's no point being in a relationship where only one person is driving it. Of course, in a long-term relationship and long-distance relationship, sometimes our energy levels change and different things are happening in our lives at different times. And yet overall, you know that you have each other's back, that you're there for each other, you're willing to support each other, listen to each other etc. So that is the kind of relationship I want you to commit to. Which leads to my second point which is are you committed to someone real? There are plenty of scammers out there who prey on women who feel insecure and are desperate for love. And I know that we don't like to think of ourselves like that, but there are plenty of women who really are finding it hard to meet someone and they end up having these so-called long distance relationships with people that are not real. That also said, maybe the person is real and yet you can't meet them. They do live in another country, they're not a scammer per se, or they do live in a different state or maybe they even say they live in the same state, we live in the same city and they're still not making time to see you. I have another video about that, which I'll actually um, share the link below, which is all about online dating and how to meet people and the signs of someone who's not great for you or that you shouldn't um, invest time in. But anyway, this video and this point is more so about I just want you to have a long distance relationship with someone who's actually fully invested in you, who's a real person who you can actually see at some stage. And if anyone asks you for money or someone is unwilling to send you photos and if someone is unwilling to go on video and someone has lots of sob stories about their life, it's a pretty good chance that they could be a scammer. So be very, very mindful about who you're giving your energy and time to. So I know that this is a sticky topic, but it's an important one because I'm here for you to have a healthy relationship with a real person and it's impossible to do that when you're not actually dealing with someone like that. So be mindful and careful and look after your heart and invest in people who are invested in you and who are able to meet you. Number three is technology is your friend. So if you're not very technically savvy, you don't know how to set up video or Skype or Zoom or you don't have Facebook and you don't know how to use video there or WhatsApp, then please get someone to help you to set that up so you can actually have a really great way or you have multiple platforms to communicate with your bow. So get that set up because it's going to make communicating a lot easier. 
Number four is avoid excessive communication. Communication is absolutely important and critical in any relationship. Though for a long distance relationship, some people overdo it. They spend hours and hours and hours every day on a call to their long distance relationship partner. And because of this excessiveness, what can happen is that mystery isn't happening in the relationship. There's no kind of intrigue and relationships need a little bit of intrigue to sort of build tension and desire. So if you're overdoing the communication, you could be actually exhausting communication, which can become a little nauseating and overwhelming, which dampens desire. So just make sure that you're not forgetting who you are, not forgetting your needs and your interests outside of the long distance relationship so that you can recreate that mystery. Point number five is all about setting clear relationship and personal boundaries. When you're in a long distance relationship, you know, it's important to have a few boundaries in place so that you know where each other stands, so that you both feel safe and looked after in the relationship. So for example, if you find that you feel a little insecure when your partner's out socially, say having work drinks or out with a female friend, maybe you have a requirement or a boundary in that relationship where you both or one side, it depends who actually has this challenge, or maybe you both agree to do it, where you both let each other know when you've come home from hanging out with work friends or a friend or so forth. It may be that you just send a text or it could be a call. That is something that the two of you would have to work out because it's understandable that when people are out socially, you can feel a little insecure. Like, are they going to meet somebody who lives close by? And you can feel like you're missing out on having fun with your partner. And make sure that the two of you have something in place here that you both agree on. That is, if this is one of those issues for both or one of you. Another boundary could be maybe you don't want to talk late into the night every night. Maybe your partner finishes work late and he loves to call when you're winding down and getting ready for sleep or maybe when you first met or you first started dating or first started the long distance relationship, you were happy to do these late calls because you missed them so much and it was new but over time you're realizing that it's impacting your sleep, it's affecting your day-to-day -day energy and your productivity at work and your health overall and you know that it's something that doesn't make you feel good and it's impacting you on a global level. So what you need to do in this kind of situation is just work out some times that work for both of you where it doesn't impact you in a negative way. So that is something that the two of you will work out based on your work schedules and sleep and all that kind of thing. Another example of having boundaries is are you allowed to date other people? Some people in long distance relationships kind of have an open relationship, some do not at all, where it's very much monogamous and devotion between two people. So that is something that also the two of you need to talk about. And of course, there may be some very specific rules within that that you both adhere to. Now that was just three examples of boundaries and I hope they helped you to give you an idea of what I mean so that you can navigate this kind of thing in different situations. Now for the next point. Remember that your partner isn't perfect. I'm not perfect, you're not perfect, no one is perfect. And yet you can still have a very beautiful relationship with your differences. So it's really important to understand that from time to time, things won't be necessarily always smooth sailing. You're going to have to work things out together as a team in order to allow this relationship to continue to develop which leads to point seven, don't make assumptions. I know that it's so easy to assume things in life, doesn't matter which relationship we're talking about, in any relationship. And yet in long distance relationships, because of the distance and because you can't see each other, sometimes it's easy to make up stories in our mind about what something means or what is happening, when in actual fact, the reality is very different. So please don't assume ask questions. If you're feeling uncertain about something, if you're wondering something, if you know you're starting to create stories in your mind about the relationship or what they're doing or what they're thinking, instead of doing that, start communicating. Communicating is everything. So communicate your fears, your uncertainties, your questions about the relationship so that you can work through them, which leads to communicating your needs in a graceful way. When we're triggered, when we're insecure, some people default to blaming, shaming, accusations, and so forth. And so it's very important 
to communicate your concerns, communicate your needs and your boundaries with grace and clarity. Now to help you with this, I have a fantastic free gift called Word Poison. I share 16 words and phrases to avoid using if you don't want to inflame a situation. If there is conflict, if there's confusion in your relationship, if you avoid these 16 words, you'll find that your relationship is able to flow through conflict and confusion and misunderstanding. So check out that free gift right below in the description. It's called Word Poison and I know you're going to love it. Now tip nine is do some Something interesting or fun together. If you've thought about traveling together to Spain or something, why not learn some Spanish together? If there's a TV show that you really want to watch and you think that your partner might be interested, watch it together or find something that you both want to watch together. And you can share the story line and talk about the plot and the characters and so forth. Or you can actually literally watch it together online at the same time. Also, you could read a book together that's really interesting. It could even be about relationships or whatever the topic is where you can share with each other what you're reading and learning and you can pull ideas apart and really learn about each other in an even deeper level. So it almost feels like you're in the same room together doing something together which is really really powerful for a long distance relationship and making it work. Number 10 is enjoy your independence. There is something beautiful about being single for example and there's something beautiful about being in a relationship. So you kind of get the best of both worlds. You get to enjoy all of your sort of world outside of a relationship and then you get to have this beautiful intimate connection with someone that you don't see as often as you would like to see. So this is the time to do the things that you don't normally do, to engage in new hobbies or courses or training or study. Which means whether you're in a long distance relationship or not, it's so important not to abandon what you love to do and it's important to nurture your own interests. So there's no better way to do that than when you're in a long distance relationship. There's no excuses. You can see your friends, see your family and also maintain a deep connection with your partner wherever they are. Number 11 is relationship goals. What are your future plans together? Do you have plans? Are you going to be in a long distance relationship for a long time or are you planning for one of you to move so that you can be together or are you just happy the way it is for now? It's okay if you are. And yet it's important that both of you are on the same page and you know where you both stand so that you can emotionally prepare and feel comfortable with where you're both at on this journey of the LDR. The next point leads on from point 12, which is making plans. So relationship goals is more of a global picture of what's gonna be happening with the relationship. And number 13 is all about actually planning times when you will be meeting up. So it's much easier on your heart and on your soul and on your psyche and on the relationship when you know when you're going to be seeing each other. So make plans. Once you've seen each other for one catch up, then plan the next one. Some people only live a few hours away where some people live a plane ride away, a few hours away. Some people live across the world from each other. So obviously depending on your situation will depend on how often you can see each other. And irrespective of that, try to have a plan for when you'll see each other next. Now, for those of you who are in a long distance relationship with someone you've never met, please review point two again, because if a person isn't making plans to see you and there's no chance that they can anytime soon, or they say that they will and keep changing the plan, then there is a good chance that you're not actually dating a real human who's looking for a real long-term relationship. I do want to reiterate, if anyone asks you for money, it's a sign that you are communicating with a scammer. I just wanted to say that again because this is a massive issue in society with the digital world. Now for my last point, which is trust one another. Trust is a massive topic. If we don't trust someone, it's very hard to have a deep connected relationship with them. In fact, it's impossible because when you don't feel emotionally safe with someone, then you don't actually have a relationship that is healthy. So for you to be in a long distance relationship, it's important that you honor your agreements, that you're kind to each other, that you respect each other's boundaries, that you communicate your needs, that you know that that person will support you and be there for you. If you don't have that, if your requirements or your agreements are not honored, then you don't have a relationship because trust 
allows for safety. And when we don't feel safe in a relationship, we cannot actually open our hearts to love. There is no possibility for a deeper connection to develop over time. And this goes for any relationship. And yet with long distance relationships, trust is even more important because you can't see the person as often. So please keep in mind these 14 points. If you're looking for deep devoted love, if you're looking for a relationship that is long distance right now that can turn into a really truly beautiful long-term lasting love affair, then it's really important that you follow these 14 points so that you can actually build that devotion and deeper intimacy and feel fulfilled in the relationship, not dissatisfied and always feeling like you're giving up on so much. Because when you're in a long distance relationship, you do also give up on certain things. So it's really important that you know what you're committing to and you know what's being committed back towards you so that you're both on the same page if that makes sense. So it's been an honor to have you here with me to help you with this, to help you navigate these challenges in a relationship and to really understand and make sure that you are committing to someone who really is compatible, loving and kind for you in your life then please check out my program, Never Lose Him. I share so much information about the different types of people we're attracted to and how to communicate and connect and really honor each other in a relationship. I talk a lot about self-worth and self-honor, which is a huge part of a long distance relationship. So please check out Never Lose Him. Uh, the link is right below in the description. It's been such an honor to have you here with me. Please subscribe to this channel, hit that bell button to get notified of my next top topic. I'd love to hear from you. So please comment below and share with me your unique situation with long distance relationships. Please share this with a friend. Also, you can tag me at Instagram. I've become much more active there of late. And please, while you're at it, please give this video the thumbs up. Please be passionate, be kind, be compassionate, and please show your love and express your love every day a little more in some way. And see you again at my next video.